we are really pleased to have Stokely Howard here from Trendy Grandad um, talking to us today about his industry and his journey into that. Uh, so Stokely, let me hand over to you. Hello, everyone. Um, uh, I appreciate being here today. Um, my name is Stokely. Um, I am a creative director at a creative agency. Um, you might all be thinking, what is that and what does he do? <laughs> but I'm going to lead on to that soon. But I'll tell you a little bit about what, what I do first and, and who I am. Uh, and then and then we can go into how I got to where I am today and, you know, what career path I took, which is a very, very interesting one. Um, but anyone looking to be in the creative sector will most likely take an interesting career path. Um, so, yeah, so my job title is creative director and I own a business in Norwich. In, in Norwich on Norfolk, I'm currently sat on, on Thorpe Road. And what we do is we specialize in producing TV commercials and adverts for businesses. So what does that mean exactly? And who's, who, who do we work for? So a business will come to us. So a business like um, uh, Aviva or Barclays, like a bank or an insurance company will come to us and go, Stokely, I need you to make us a television commercial. I need you to make us a, an advert or a promotional video to advertise this particular service um, and to show what we do. I'm sure many people have seen promotional videos uh, on, on, uh, on Facebook or on Instagram or they've been watching the ITV Hub and they've seen an advert come on there. Um, you know, that's that's what we do. We're, we're creative. We are creative. So we think of ideas. We think of really cool concepts for brands uh, and businesses. And we work with them and we, we produce um, we produce videos and, and commercials. Um, and the type of businesses we work with are the, the, the corporates or brands. So we've worked with um, all sorts of people from the fashion industry, from the insurance industry, from the bank industry and whatnot. Um, and then, so that's who I am. And my business is called Trendy Grand Ave. It's a little bit strange as a name of a business, but <laughs> we, um, we understand that uh, that we need to stand out, we need to be different as a business too. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about my journey and the reason why I'm gonna to talk to you about my journey and, and where I got to where, you know, and how I got to this position in my life today is because the creative industry is an industry which you, there's no, this is why people find it so difficult to get into because there's no set path into the industry. There's no set route to get to, to anywhere really. Um, and, and that's why it's such an interesting industry. It's very uh, lucrative in terms of like you can get paid a lot and you can you can travel the world and you can you can experience a, a lot. But there's no set path. And it's more about your skill set and who, who, who you are as a person and what you're willing to do rather than, you know, getting a degree. And then from the degree, you get this. And then from that, you get that, that career progression. There's many different routes and many different ladders into many different sectors. And again, that's what makes it so interesting. So I started off um, and I realized quite early on that I didn't need where I wanted to get to. I didn't necessarily need a degree to get to that position. I wanted to become a television producer and I eventually wanted to start my business, which is what I, what I do now. And I realized that I didn't need a degree for that. What I needed was I needed connections and I needed people. So I thought to myself where I'm in Norwich and Norwich, unfortunately, doesn't have the it, although it is a creative a uh, creative city it doesn't have the big productions the big shiny floor television shows that that everyone you know that i wanted to work on um it has has small sort of independent creative agencies and a couple of bigger ones but there's, there's not many if you compare it to manchester or london so first of all i started um by volunteering giving up my time on a saturday at bbc radio norfolk to help them with their uh, with their tech and their cameras and and help them produce their shows and, and just basically do anything I need to do, whether that was make teas, make coffees. Um, I was there to just be a body and just be a person to to help. And what that does, although it might not sound the most glamorous a job, but what that does is it allows you to get close to people who are already in the industry and it allows you to make connections. And that's the most important thing, really, is finding people in the industry that can take you to the next step. So. I started doing that and then um, I reached out to uh, a friend of mine that was in uh, Manchester at the time working in the TV industry and you think well how did you get that connection well you 
you speak to people at you know the job that I'm already working at the volunteering job and they know people up in Manchester and they know people up in London because they've built up a career so you're using other people to leverage um you know using other people to, to leverage yourself to, to push yourself up that career chain ladder and it might only be a small step at the start you might just you know the first job in the television industry is the is the runner's role and the runner's role is is, the, is what I was doing at, at BBC Radio Norfolk, which is making the teas, making the coffees, running around the studio, you know, bringing the presenter his script and doing all those sorts of sorts of jobs, which don't necessarily take, uh, don't necessarily have, you don't necessarily need the skill to do that. But all you need is hard work, graft and show that that you're passionate about the industry and show that you're 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 willing to do what it takes to um, to, to get to where you want to next. So once I was put in that environment, I actually, um, you can ask me questions about this uh, later if you like, but my first ever job, I was a runner on the Jeremy Kyle show at ITV. So yes, there's many questions that, <laughs> that surround that, but we'll go on to the actual, actual, we'll talk about the career side first rather than the Jeremy Kyle show. <laughs> um, and what I did there was I was, I was running guests from one place to another. I was making teas, et cetera, et cetera. But what that allowed me to do as a runner, um, I got to meet the television producers. I got to meet the researchers. I got to meet the senior researchers, the assistant producers, the camera operators, the lighting, the lighting people. I got to meet everyone that was on the set. And all I did really was just become really friendly with them um, and just, be, you know, just be a nice person. And then what that ultimately meant is that they liked me as a person. And therefore, when there was a, another job role that came up, there was another run up the ladder. I am. Um, you know, I was the first to get that one because ultimately they liked me and they could see that I was passionate for the role. So they taught me how to do the role over the course of a month. The next thing you know, I was in that job. And then um, from that point onwards, I jumped around lots of different television shows because I still wanted to build up my experience. So um, I worked on uh, the Judge Rinder show as well, which was another one that ITV produced. I'm sure many people have seen that. Um, and then from there, I'd built, I'd, I'd worked my way up over three years to become a producer. And then that's when my brain kicked in and thought, why do I actually, why did I actually start this industry in the first place? And that was to start my own business and to start my own creative agency and start my own advertising agency, which is what I do today. So I, I realized that I needed more experience still. I couldn't just work in the, in one television um, production for uh, two to three years and, and then just go and do it on my own thing. I was still about 21 at the time. Um, so what I did is I left ITV and I got another job working for um, a program called The Secret Life of the Zoo. Uh, and The Secret Life of the Zoo is based at Chester, Chester Zoo. It's, it's, it's programmed on Channel 4. And I was a, an, a story assistant producer. So what that means is that I'd find the stories within the zoo. So I'd find out if the if the um if the rhino was pregnant or if the rhino was having babies or if the giraffe had you know i'd find all these sorts of stories within the animals so we could produce it into a television show and that was my job there and then while i was doing that as well um i was um I, i'd met a commercials producer who was making uh television commercials and commercials for brands and businesses which was, I was like great this is what i want to do i don't you know although i enjoy the television industry i'm really passionate about making commercials for brands and businesses because that's where you know, you can really develop your ideas uh, and you can really implement the ideas that you have for brands and businesses. So I, um, again, I, I, I started eventually working for, for that for that uh, company and started producing adverts for companies like Virgin Mobile and Virgin Media and Pizza Express and, uh, and lots of different uh, businesses and brands. Um, and then that's when I went on my own. And going on your own was a scary, a scary step but actually, if you want to work in the creative industry, you've got to be quite, you know, you've got to be, you've got to know that the industry is, although it's, although it's a great industry and you can get a lot of experience, the security in the industry is poor. So what I mean by that, if you look at, if you, if you're someone that wants to stay in it, you know, in a job and you want to work in that job for, for 20 years, you know, I, I, would, I would say, I would say a example, a good example of a secure industry would be a police officer, for example. This is the complete opposite end to that. So you, you know, if you're working on a television show, for example, you can work on the television show, it gets made, it takes three months to get made. And once that television show has been made, there's no job at the end of it, if you think about it, that you don't just, you know, you don't just, you can't just work on a show that's already been made, it's already been produced. The, 
the, the video and the content has already been been work uh, has already been made so then you have to find another job and you find another job but that's what i'm saying that that getting your that if you're going to work in the television industry getting your your people skills and knowing people is so important um because it, it does ultimately help you be a bit more secure in, in your life so that's the history of my career. And then off the back of the commercials, I jumped into making, into uh, building Trendy Grandad, which is the, the advertising slash creative agency that we, we have currently today. Um, I want to ask a few questions. And I know obviously no one can answer these questions now, but I want to ask these questions because um, these questions will help you identify whether you, you are perhaps the right fit for this, for this creative world that we live in, which can go in many different directions mine was in the television and the, the producing of video but it can go in many different directions it can go into graphics it can go into radio it can go into um uh, interior design even you know there's many different ways that the, the creative uh, you can you can many different approaches and many different routes and journeys uh, that you can take and no one's journey is is right or wrong and no one's journey is the same um so the first question I want to ask everyone and answer this to yourself is who are you? Are you good at talking to people? Are you confident naturally? And do you mind chatting to people? I'm not saying you have to be a complete extrovert, but what I'm saying is, is that uh, do you feel comfortable in those skills? And the reason why I asked that question, because if you if your answer was yes to that and you feel like you are good at talking to people, then already you're probably on the right path. Um, a lot of this, a lot of these, the, Scott, the soft skills that you, that you have, I would say in this industry, in the creative industry, it's 70, 30 soft to academic. And basically what that, what that means is, is that you don't necessarily need to be academic to do really well in the industry. So many people I know that are super high up uh, and, and an exec friend of mine who's super high up um, is didn't get any, I think you got two GCSEs or something. So what I'm saying is, is that, 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 that your soft skills are important, are just as or, or more important than your other academic skills. So your people skills, your listening skills, talking to people. Um, and another, my, my second question was, is are you good already at convincing and at selling? The reason why I say that is because you, if in the creative industry, you'll, you know, although a massive part of it is being being liked and just being a nice person, you are consistently going to be selling. And what I mean by that is that you're not gonna you're not gonna pick up a pen and sell a pen to someone. You're gonna be selling yourself, um, and you're gonna be selling yourself consistently um, because ultimately that's what people want if they're gonna hire you in the creative in industry. They want someone that is. Is a, it, it, that can sell themselves and that can talk and that can can sell their product, you know, sell the, for example, sell the television show or, you know, if I was working on the Jeremy Kyle show, I'm, I'm selling because I want to get contributors to the show. Um, if I'm working on 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 the zoo program, I'm selling because I'm convincing that the the, the, um, the the zoo staff that that I need their stories to be on on our television show. So you're, you're constantly selling and you're constantly selling yourself as a person. So if you feel like you're good at selling, maybe you're good at convincing your mum and dad already, um, then it's probably a, a good industry for you. Um, if you enjoy solving problems, is a really big one. I would say 50% of my job is putting out fires and solving problems. That's con con constantly what I'm doing day in, day out, is I'm speaking to clients and I'm solving the problems. I'm figuring out how... You know we can help them ultimately it's not about when a client comes to me and says oh stokely you know we have this amazing service we do this and we do that ultimately that's not what they want to sell they want to sell the problem that their their product solves for their customers so i'm trying to figure out how we can sell that you know how we can solve that problem for them uh, and and also working in the sector as well it's a it's a massive people sector and, a, and what comes to people is problems um not in a negative way but it's true people do create problems so you need to be good at solving them and you almost need to be you almost need to enjoy solving problems i would say more than anything else if you don't enjoy solving problems then um you'll hate it and then eventually you probably hate the industry um this industry with you know if if you sh i'm not saying that and knowing i know other industry doesn't involve hard work it definitely does but um, i'm passionate about this industry so i'd say we're the hardest working but this industry does really really 
you know, require long hours, you know, hard working. I'm at my office every day at seven o'clock and I'm leaving here every day at eight o'clock, seven, eight o'clock. I'm doing 12 hour days every day. And that's just not, you know, if, if you, if you want, if you wanted to do nine to five, um, it's probably not the industry that, that, you know, nine to five doesn't really exist in this industry. Unfortunately, <laughs> it is very much, you get the job done and then when it's done, it's done. Um, and you'll be doing all sorts of random things. For example, I was on a shoot at, on Chroma Beach last Sunday at eight o'clock on the beach last Sunday night. <laughs> so that's an hour that you think you should be just, you know, watching celeb. I'm a celebrity and going to bed. You know, I was out on the beach in the cold and the rain with a big with with, with a crew and a lighting kit filming. So yeah, it doesn't it doesn't nine to five doesn't really exist. Um, a couple more questions. If you're interested in how things are made and how things to put together and you're already interested in that, then I would say it's a really good in industry. The reason why I say that is that for myself as a child, I was, I was always interested in, in how things are built um, and how things are put together. And I always was coming up with ideas and, and, and things like that. And if you're already coming up with ideas and you're already an ideas person and it comes quite naturally to you, I'd say it's a, it's a, it's a great industry for you um, because a lot of, of what we do is problem solving and a lot of what we do is is building things and a lot of what we do is is creating ideas as well and coming up with ideas um and and some people aren't naturally good at coming up with ideas um but as long as you can sort of sit there and think and come up with ideas you, you're probably on the right track um and then another question here I was going to ask, but I don't think I can ask that one because no one's um, actually replying <laughs> on the on the call. Um, and then my final thing that I was going to talk about is one second. That's it. So skill sets, options, and journey into the industry. Um, when it comes to skill sets, like I said, your your people skills are just as important as your academic skills. I'll give you a, an example of this, for example, this is that I've got to where I've got today. I've traveled the world producing television adverts and commercials. I've worked for brands like Virgin Mobile, Virgin Media, all these all these huge brands. And I've never once shown my grades to any single person. So I've managed to get all of these jobs because of what's come out of my mouth and 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 how I've approached this, how I've approached these people um, and how and how I've, and I've spoken to them and how I've sold myself. Um, and, and work and work hard as well so what i'm saying is is that if you're perhaps not so academic um you know but you've got these soft skills just go for, this is a, a very good industry for you and perhaps you're not you know perhaps you say perhaps you haven't got an actual creative skill for example say so you're not very good at you know i'm not very good at art i wasn't particularly great on cameras you know i wasn't very good at drawing i wasn't very good at acting but what i was good is with people skills and talking to people so, you know, a, a role, for example, like a radio presenter or a television, a radio producer or a television producer, that production role is probably quite a good role for you. Um, and then the final thing, I just want to, to reiterate, the journey into the industry is never the same. There's many different ways that, that you can get into a, the creative field, but as long as, you're, as long as you are willing to work hard, as long as you're willing to put a lot of passion into it, and as long as you actually care about the industry and the people that you work with, you'll do very well and that's it stokely that was absolutely brilliant i was completely engaged but actually for what has been sort of 20 minutes so we're kind of pretty short oh, on right, that's question good. time but that was so interesting and i loved your sort of five questions for people to think about for themselves as well as the idea of being the person that finds the stories in the zoo because that also sounds yeah. very brilliant <laughs> um, yeah. just sort of before we uh, sort of move to our next speaker I, I, I asked this of somebody else and I just wanted to ask this of you really because you've had such a varied journey into this if you could go back and speak to your younger self about your career what what piece of advice would you give them um I would say not to worry so much um I I, I always felt like it, it is a very insecure industry in terms of the, the jobs but I would say just not to worry like you'll be all right just keep talking to people keep speaking to people and and, and if anything i wish i'd built a bigger connection a uh, bigger database of connections sooner um because ultimately like you know that, that's that's what what get pushes you forward in the industry 
Brilliant. Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. Stokely, thank That's you fine. so much for your time. I'm going to turn off the recording. We'll be putting that on the I Can Be A site and also okay. we're creating a sort of YouTube channel. We might come to you for some top tips, but yeah. that's really, that's just been absolutely fascinating. And thank you so much sure. for your candour and your honesty about um, about your industry, because I think that's really important for people sure. to hear the um, the challenges as well as all the good stuff that goes yeah. on. So thanks again. Can I just say, if anyone wants yeah, to get a hold of me, um, you can email me at hello at trendygrandad.com so if you need That's to really kind of you. then please do